bitches. Broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everyone. This is Ooh. season This is season eight, episode 14, episode number 329. And I only have one question for you. <clears throat> I practiced all week. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> yeah, that's very good. <laughs> it sounded better in my head. I think it sounded better last week, too. Let me try again. What's your favorite scary movie? That nice. sounds more like the Joker then. Yeah, that was a little <laughs> That was, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, they can't all be perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you're if you're referencing other movies, then I feel like we're on point. Yeah. yeah. There, there we go. Yeah. And, and you knew what I meant by the Joker. At least Amanda did. Yeah. In theme. Yeah. In theme. Yeah. Totally. Anyway, how's it going? I am recording from my mom's basement uh, on Long also, Island. Also in theme. In theme, yes. I <laughs> wanted to be in Amanda's tonight, but it's probably for the best because you are yeah. sick. Yeah, you don't want to be here. We're all in various Aww. states of some strange respiratory cold. It's not great. I'm sorry. I hope you guys are feeling much better soon. Yeah, I think I'm the only one that like is still feeling. No, I don't want to say that. I think Daniel still has some symptoms too. I don't know. We're all just kind of a mess over here. Oh, so I'm for sorry. the best. <laughs> Yeah. I hope you have a nice cup of tea. Oh, I got some throat coat. Holler back Woo! to a theater camp. Oh, yeah. That shit works. That shit works. You <laughs> should have heard me pre this this mug of tea. think I sound bad now. <laughs> I sounded way <laughs> worse a half hour ago. <laughs> Aw. I'm glad that your throat coat is working. Yeah. Um, in uh, two of the three movies that we watched for this uh, week's episode, uh, throat coat would totally mean a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the movies that we uh, decided to talk about for this year that all three of us are going to watch was uh, Scream, Scary Movie, and uh, Sleepy Hollow, which, you know, was a was a last minute suggestion by Jamie Joe, and I had not seen that movie since I saw it in theaters, and I'm glad that we watched it. Like you know, the Johnny Deppness aside, I have to say I think that that movie was the goriest out of all the ones we watched. So but much like, blood, <laughs> but just the right amount of camp that like I could yes yeah. tolerate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah no, that's you fair. know, it was like just Tim Burtony enough that like yeah, yeah, it felt so removed from realistic that I could like yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Yes. And, and we'll the about- Christina Ricci of it all. Oh, I know. Yeah, with her dyed eyebrows. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. The 90s, man. Oh, or what a, year is that? It was that? time. Yeah, it, it was that time. In, 97. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I wrote it down. Because it but came in 96 out, or 1997, right? Scream, no, it yeah. came out in 96. Scream's 96. Sleepy Hollow's 99. Oh, okay. oh 99. Yeah. And then Scary Same Movie had to have been the same time or 2000? It was 2000. 2000. Okay. And I thought... Week- so we Scream really kept was, it. Scream was three years before Sleepy Hollow, but it really felt like the other way around. Yes. Mm. Yes. And then we were gonna, there was an option for Nightmare Before Christmas. I told Alex I'd watch that with him. It never happened. But I did watch the new um, movie on Amazon Prime called Totally Killer with nice. Kiernan Shipka, who was Sabrina. Mm. And oh. um uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, I love her. She was in the uh, Cruel Summer season one. I'm blanking on her name. Um, uh, uh, Olivia, summer. Olivia, something. Um, I'll look it up when we get to it. But I, I'll just say now. And I know we got feedback on it, so I'll save the rest of it for the feedback. But I loved it. It was, I loved it. So the quick premise of what the movie was about was uh, so uh, Karen Shipka is a, a a high school girl. She's 16 years old, named Jamie. And Jamie's mom, when Jamie's mom was younger, so 35 years earlier when her mom was 16, she um, uh, she was in a group of girls and three of the four of them were killed. Her mom was the only survivor. And uh, we Dark. come to 35 years later and uh, the killer is apparently back and it's up to Jamie to, mm-hmm. to stop the killer. It's very, she goes back in time 
it's very back to the future where she's trying to not mess with the timeline. <laughs> and, and she basically at some point is just like, fuck it. Like <laughs> I want to save everyone's life. And it's funny because it's not you. The people that get murdered are the people that you know are going to get murdered. Like she's trying to save all four girls' life. Lives. Okay. So, so is it is it like is it a straight up scary movie or is no. it meant to be more? It's a, it's a thriller, mm-hmm. but it's a very okay. Gen Z thriller. Like okay. there's no really jump scares. Okay, but not like Gen Z killer killer or thriller like bodies bodies bodies. No, 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 no. Not like that at all. <laughs> okay. Not like that. That, at all. Mo- that movie, just watching the trailer, I'm like, that is not for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not like that at all. Okay. That was with Megan Fox, right? Was that? No. No, that was the one. Um, and maybe maybe I have the title wrong, but that was the no, one. No, that thing of Jennifer's like- Body. Yeah. Jennifer's oh, Jennifer's body. body. That <laughs> yeah. that would be fun. We can watch yeah. that sometime. I, I, that, I feel like that's an Elaine. I that's bodies, very. Bodies, bodies is, is just like a lot of Gen Zers like yes. swearing at each other and like it's very ultra violent and like mm. ultra self-aware and just like not for me. That's okay. For, but Jennifer's yeah, body. I feel like we could do something with that. That's yeah. Very, yeah. I feel like that's on brand for us. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm down. I've never seen it. I don't think. Also, have you guys ever seen Teeth? Have we talked about this on the podcast before? We've talked about we Teeth and how it's kind of it. fucked up. It's awesome. That like, I don't know why I'm thinking of this so late. Yeah. Throw that in. Anyway. Well, good thing. It's not a Halloween, Halloween movie. But, Halloween yeah. is every year. So we yeah. can just do it next year. I know. Uh, Mandy, can you please set a reminder? Yes. <laughs> please, <laughs> Mandy. We need you. <laughs> reminder. <laughs> so, so, so she goes back in time. And it's not like, yes, people get murdered by the murderer the first time around because she does, spoiler, she doesn't save everyone. So the, the ones that get killed are part of the group that you know it's going to happen. So you're expecting it. It's not like a jump scare or, yeah. or anything like that. It's not like, it's only the killing scenes that are bloody. Like, again, and it's very funny and it's it's kind of lighthearted in a way, but also, like, I'm trying, I'm explaining this terribly. It's basically a murder, a uh, a uh, uh, you know, a serial killer movie, but Back to the Future. Okay, I like that premise. I mean, that's, that's it a is great. Solid elevator pitch. I feel like and, uh, on that, I'm here for it. No, I seriously, I totally recommend it. Like, it's not. I'm not gonna. If I had watched it right before bed, I would not have any problems sleeping. Like, hmm. truly, it was really fun, and it's very, it's very in that same uh, vein of something like Sex Lies of College Girls, hmm. where okay. they're pointing out things. Like she's going through the the ni- it's nineteen eighty seven the year she goes back to, and she's pointing oh, out God. she goes, uh, "Your your shirt is very pl- problematic." Oh, and there's the racism, and you know, so there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of things that she's just pointing out, like to like the to the audience, and it's you know it's, you could it's just very of that, you know, it's. Hmm. I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a non-scary Halloween movie that still has kind of those killer themes. <laughs> totally. I, I did. I really, really liked it. I'm so you're glad that for I watched it. a killer it. good time. It was a killer good time. <laughs> so do you guys want to jump into some of the other movies? Sure. sure um, okay. But before we do, quick housekeeping notes. Next week, live Zoom Halloween costume party. Did we ever settle on a time? No. no, I don't know if we did. I don't think we did. Would a nine o'clock work for for next week? I mean, it's fine by me. Yeah, I can I can do nine, and usually the live shows are a little more like yeah, chop chop. Um, yeah. Also, I am happy to announce that I know what my costume is. Yes, Whoa, <laughs> I know. I do not. I feel so accomplished. Yay! I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I am still. I'm open to suggestions, folks. DM me with your Halloween costume suggestions. I yes. don't know what to do. Amanda needs she needs you to slide into her DMs with yeah, your costume. But only <laughs> with costumes. Everything else. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's be mature and professional about this, guys. Let's not be gross. Yes, yes. No gross costumes. <laughs> no, no gross, gross messages. Costumes. Just, just yeah. Just costume suggestions. Yes, please. <laughs> And then, uh, so nine o'clock, normal Zoom link. I'll post it on the socials as always. Hope you guys can join us. I will find my best scary stories for this year. Ooh, oh boy. If you have ghost stories, this Tasia, Tasia girl, you got to put in a reminder. We need the real life ghost stories and anybody yes. else that has them. 
Mm -hmm. Bring them on. And then um, one last thing, uh, Broad's giving this year. Are you? Do you guys have uh, Thanksgiving plans or because I just wanted to set a date for that? Oh, yes. Yes. We <laughs> are going to be gone that whole week okay. of Thanksgiving. Okay. Oh, nice. Because so flights to, Atlanta, we... were, or to Nashville were very expensive. So we had to go all the way to Monday to get a, a reasonable Ooh. flight. <laughs> okay. It's a great then. excuse to go for longer. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, flights are ridiculous. Oh my god, they it's are. so expensive. It, it's so expensive. So we no. were gonna fly, now we're just gonna drive. Yeah. <laughs> is it so bad? Yeah. Always. Okay, so do we want to set it for like Thursday the 16th then? Does that work? I think that's okay. Let me I think that should work, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Let me just double check. All right. So Broad's giving November 16th, a Thursday, just like real uh real Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. Yay! Yes, indeed. All right. Well, that is a month away. Oh my God, it's a month away from Broadsgiving. Oh my gosh, this That's year crazy. I, I like can't even. It's flying by too fast. It is. Uh -huh. it, it truly is. Kind of. It kind truly, of, truly is. We're in that time of the year where it's just you know, it's the Fourth of July. Then it's Thanksgiving. Then it's January. Yeah, just moves yeah. that quickly. And then I'm forty. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm forty. <laughs> oh yeah, that's coming up. It is coming up. All right. Anyway, moving into the movie section. Okay. Uh, let's do it in this order. Let's do Scream, Scary Movie, because they kind of go together. And then mm -hmm. we'll finish with Sleepy Hollow. Sounds yes. good to me. That sounds, sounds good? Great. Yes. Okay. Um, so, Scream. I loved that movie when it came out. And I kind of still loved it. Even though there's some things, most things kind of hold up. Scary movie does not hold up. Scary oh, movie no. does not hold up. It, is, yeah, it is a time capsule of all the things that were inappropriate around the turn of the millennium. Yes. Yeah. But Scream, I agree. Like there was um, especially some like fat phobia, which is like Courtney Cox. Right. I don't know if it's her or, I mean, it's the writers, right? But like, how I, uh, does she keep doing these roles that are super fat phobic? Right. Come so. on. But that was the part, too, that I was like, mm, perhaps this does not hold up. But other yeah. than that tub of lard ass line, I feel yeah. like the rest of it still is really funny. Um, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you did you like the opening a scene is so iconic. So iconic. And like, yeah. just seriously, like killing off Drew Barrymore in the first scene is really badass. Yeah, it really it, is. Because remember, totally put the whole genre, spin, put the whole genre on its head. Yeah. Yes, we thought that she was going to be a star of the movie because she's like in the front of the poster. Well, she's a, she's on the poster and she's Drew Barrymore. <laughs> right. And at that point, it was like the height of like Drew Barrymore's Drew Barrymore-ness. Yeah. It's kind of um, amazing that she signed on to do it, you know? So way. she was originally supposed to play Sydney. And really? Then, oh. Yeah. And it wasn't and it her idea to... To be, yeah, I it was think her. That sounds vaguely yeah. familiar. Yes, and it ended up being her idea to why don't I just wow. be a person that gets killed in the beginning? Wow, but, and it yeah. works, but and still it's, it's, pay yeah. me full. Yeah, yes. <laughs> as a star, get it? Yeah, because yeah. I'm Drew Barrymore. Because I'm Drew Barrymore. Still bringing people and to that movie. Uh, so. 1996. So. Yeah. Um, of course, the boyfriend's name is Steve. I don't know why I wrote that down, but I think I just was like, eh, it's always a Steve. It's always a Steve. <laughs> <laughs> But it's so campy and amazing. Yeah. 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 So good. Uh, although it's like part of me wonders, it's like in like a, could, could a scream have pulled off such a like reveal in like modern social media, like pop culture world, you know, like, does that live, is that like lightning in the bo in a bottle, you know, like would have that gotten spoiled in like a current I don't know. There's still some. There's still some secrets that are pretty well kept. Mm. And if they like went full blitz on like a social media campaign, I think that where like she's in like you know all of the promos and stuff. I think they could have maybe pulled it off if it wasn't already a thing that had happened. Like if that hadn't happened in a movie twenty years ago, I feel like they <laughs> probably could have maybe. Right. I like I don't know. But, but I also. Love it. Speaking of social media, that's like one of the things that is interesting to watch it 20 years later, because obviously the importance of the landline, like yes. that doesn't work anymore. Um, 
you know, had to live through it to understand. But even just like, we know everything instantly and like they still didn't. Yes. So you still have to like go to school before you find out that something happened the night before. Yeah. Versus like nowadays. I remember being amazed when I watched it and every subsequent time I've watched it. And sometimes I actually think about this, like speaking of things that like live rent free in my mind, sometimes I will think about this. Like she calls 911 from the computer. I oh my know. God. I wrote that down. I was like, how did she even do that? But like, that's... I remember being like, wow, that's <laughs> really cool. When I first watched it in 1996. And then like, how did, but how? She's made, oh. she made computers cool. <laughs> yeah, she did. Girls in STEM. <laughs> also, she looks so young. And like Nev Campbell. She probably was so young. She was, but like, I feel like she looks young now still. But when I saw her, I was like, oh my God, she does look like a like a teenager, even though she's clearly probably not. But yeah, yeah. let's see. Oh, Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich. So first of all, Why what is it like to go? <laughs> what is it like to go through your life named Skeet? <laughs> We both yeah. had that. I gotta find out if that's a. I meant to look up if that was a nickname or not. Yeah. By the no, way, in the credits, and then how does how does that face how is that face named Ski? I just yeah. It's he's my so mind. pretty, and you know what? If you look him up in real life, like today, he's still very very attractive. Really. He also he's, picked that name. Was... His his birth name is Brian Ray Trout. Trout, oh. huh? Yeah, like the fish. And you're gonna like choose to go by Skeet? Apparently, well, it's certainly distinctive, and we're talking about it. So, yeah, I guess. I mean, if it's a nickname you chose and it's like funny, I get. But it's in the credits. Like that's more than just like a. Some of my classmates call me this. That's like a, you're committed to it. That's yeah. No, that's that's probably on his uh, SAG uh, SAG yeah. card. It is on yeah. his SAG card. Yeah. So Skeet is a nickname that originated from Skeeter. A nickname that was given he was given by his little league coach because of his small statue. Stature, small stature, and because he was fast as a mosquito. <laughs> okay. Does that have anything to do with the Skeeter character in that cartoon? No the idea. Muppets? No, um, like Doug? Is it in oh, Doug that there's Skeeter a Skeeter? Skeeter and Doug. Is oh, that right? Yeah. Is that no, friend? I don't think so. His friend, the, the purple guy, he was, that was Skeeter, right? I think so, yeah. Um, wow. Doug, no, I don't. Skeeter. No, I don't think that it came from Skeeter. I think it just came from him being little and, and okay. mosquito like. Yeah. But he is very mosquito. he's very attractive. Skeeter. Skeeter. Skeeter, the cartoon character is like bluish green. We'd have to ask uh, Jay and Frank on the color and has like a penis. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So Matthew Doug. Lillard, Jay and I met him in real life at Comic Con. What? Here's the okay, so here's here's the thing. We used to go to the Omni Bar and hang out there. We'd make a point to go at least once because that's where a lot of the celebrities were put up. And that's where we saw George R.R. R. Martin. That's where we saw Evangeline Lilly. That's where we saw Matthew Lillard. And Matthew Lillard would frequently, I mean, we saw him there, I'm pretty sure more than one time at the bar. And he would like hold court there and like talk to people. And it was just really <laughs> Like a really like this outgoing dude, right? I could see that. Yeah. And we were just like, holy shit, like Matthew Lewis sitting two people down from us. This is kind of weird and cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like just sitting there talking to like people famous and not who came in and just like, you know, overall like being jovial at happy hour. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, but I, I yeah, that was, I, sometimes I, I wish that I would see him now because I think I would be like. I'd be like, um, you know, uh, what's the fucking line? Holy shit, I'm, I'm ruining my own joke. Oh, I'm feeling a little woozy here. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny He's so in, the, in his role. It's, it's pretty awesome. You could tell that they just like let him go at the end and they were like, <laughs> guys, be as fucking ridiculous as possible. Yeah, yeah. There are no rules. <laughs> there are no rules. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because like, when you when you watch it knowing the ending like it's so clear from the very beginning that billy yeah is the killer mm -hmm. but they did like a good job with every time it's like giving you just enough reason to be like okay maybe not yeah and i think it's that very that's... much like the sixth sense you know it's like yeah. mm -hmm. 
you don't see it until they want you to see it. And then you yeah. can't for that yeah, first yeah. time through. <laughs> because yeah. it feels like it feels like it's it's being set up to be the red herring. And then yeah. and then it's like, oh yeah, no, it's yeah. And you can tell when at least this time around, and I don't know if this was, you know, I was looking for it or not, but like this time around, I could tell when it was Stu and when it was Billy in the ghost face costume. Oh. Ooh. I didn't even really think to think about that. Because I mean, there's one. Is there's it like one... body language or body height? Like what? How, no, how no, no, no. It's just like when they appear like in the next scene or not. Like mm -hmm. um, it's definitely Stu as ghost face when they attack uh, the cameraman and Sid in the car. And um, uh, what's her name? Because she's he says. Because uh, Billy says to Stu, you told me she was taken care of or something like that. Oh, and yeah. It's like, she okay, well. You still look dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then it's like, okay, now you can kind of backtrack. Like, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can kind of mm. sort of figure it out again. Most of it's probably audience yeah. reaching in my part. But, yeah. Well, no, like, I like when, um, when they try to kill Sid in, like, one of the first scenes. And then Billy comes through the window. It's like. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that was clearly him. Um, that was some good thinking on his part. But um I loved I love classic like uh door on door to love yes! the door. <laughs> classic like teenage girl move. Loved that. All the cell phone stuff was awesome. Do you think they cloned it? Well, I even wrote down some of the lines because they're just so like you know old. Um, yeah. There's no way his cellular has been cloned. <laughs> what does that even fucking mean? <laughs> his cell. I have a cellular. <laughs> so um, you know it is so. I actually wrote that down too. Going back to my notes, it's so obvious who the killer killers are. But mm -hmm. you're right. There are some amazing lines in this movie, like "Liver alone," and <laughs> um. All the Jamie Kennedy stuff, the rules. Yes, yes, yes. I utterly forgot that Jamie Kennedy was even in this movie. I love that Jamie Kennedy is my birthday buddy. Is, oh, that's a nice birthday I buddy think, to have. I, I think he's my birthday buddy. Yeah. Um, it might be Seth somebody else. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not sure. Might be Seth Green. <laughs> it might be Seth Green. <laughs> Shit. That's totally they have, fair. They have a similar vibe. They're probably like <laughs> apart in height. Probably yeah. a similar vibe. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, now I need to know. Hold on one second. I, I, I have the gas list up on Wikipedia. <laughs> but in terms of the rules, the one rule that he left out, which is like shit. super obvious after It the is fact. Seth Green. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, shit. <laughs> But the one rule that he uh, left out is that they always kill off the black characters first. And in Scream, there's not even any black characters. Right. So right. I guess he didn't have to say that no, rule. He didn't but... have to say that one. Yeah. Are you sure you're, you're not, not thinking of this movie? Are you sure not thinking of Survivor seasons, Shandy? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, in Scream 2. It's not there... funny, but I'm laughing. I'm sorry. Yeah. In um, Scream 2, there is. A black couple and then they get killed off do they i didn't them. i was gonna watch scream too but we, i just didn't have enough time i think i might go on and it's john pinkett it. smith in that like she, i mean she's kind of like the oh, drew barrymore yeah. like big star that gets killed off right away but it's that it's the, it's like the same sort of you know opening scene um yeah and again the only reason i know that is because we randomly <laughs> we randomly scream watched too. it my favorite character in um, okay oh let me finish Jamie Kennedy what I was gonna say so my third thought was I love that Jamie Kennedy comes up with these rules they're awesome I still think they apply to horror movies and he's yelling at Jamie Lee Curtis is also a Jamie and at that sequence where ghost faces behind him where they're watching like on the 30 second delay uh -huh. and he's like go Jamie Jamie turn around Jamie turn around and it's like you're Jamie turn around I thought oh, that was that's really funny fun. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. But my favorite character is uh, Tatum. Tatum's pretty great. Yeah. Um, so wait, so so which one killed Tatum then? I don't know. I kind of assumed maybe maybe it was also Stu, just because he seems That's to so be very up. active in that party. And he and when when uh, he's asked like, "Yo, where's Tatum?" She goes, "I mm. know. Oh, she probably got pissed at me and left." Yeah, yeah, mm. no, that's true. And he 
Yeah. One that actually asked her to go get more beer in the garage. Yes. So he would have known that she was in there. No. Mm. Um, but she's always in my favorite just because of that home. I'll send you a copy. Bam, bitch went down. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, Sydney, super bitch. <laughs> oh, she's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird though that they're all like partying right after you know their classmates have been brutally murdered right, right? and the killer's still on the loose like that's the part where it's like really and like the parents are out of town meanwhile sydney is quote unquote apologizing because she's self-absorbed with all this post-traumatic stress just right. like oh, all of the like the the peer pressure to have sex was not, not right good. Yeah, he's such a fucking misogynist. Rose McGowan, she's the one that got the ball kind of rolling on the Harvey Weinstein stuff, right? Yes. 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 Okay. And this was a Miramax film, so. Yes. Weinstein's. Yes. As was Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yeah, that's right. That didn't even click. Yeah. It's it's like, that was also like a big reminder, like watching these movies. Like, oh, right. This was like. The Weinsteins just like touched everything that came out of Hollywood at this point, mm -hmm. you know, whether they asked to be touched or not. Right. 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 Yeah. right. It was just like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, justice for Rose McGowan. She's yeah. awesome. You're yep. here. And Fonzie is principal. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, what? He didn't even. The best part about that is he didn't even fucking need to die. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. That was. <laughs> It was just a gratuitous scene where yeah. the principal gets killed. Yeah, because usually it was just, usually they were just killing women, but uh... I think that I bet you that uh, Hen Henry Winkler was just like, "I'll be in your movie, but I want to get killed." <laughs> right? Could you see that? Like being in his like writer, he's like or his contract, like, yeah, I'll do it, but I want to be murdered. I'm always the Fonz. I want to want to do something fun. I got 20 years until Barry comes out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Digging a toe. <laughs> um, which I never watched season two or three of Barry. I probably should. I think we started anyway. season three and it was just like, nope, I don't think, I don't think we can do this. Too sad. Too sad. Jay watched the whole series and he said that it's actually quite, quite good ending. I imagine it is, but it's like, I feel like when it's sort of the same, sorry, and this is like way off topic, but like sort of the same thing as why we never finished uh, Handmaid's Tale. Mm. And like at a certain point, like when the season dropped, like it just didn't have the emotional space for it yeah. for like season three of Barry. It's like, we don't have the time for television and like, I don't need the time I do have for television. I didn't need something that heavy. Sure. Yeah. I get it. Trust me. I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. And, and maybe one day I'll be bored enough to watch it. But I've, yeah. I've got Halloween stuff to watch. I got to go exactly. watch Scream 3. That's and the then thing. There's Scream always something three. else to watch. There's always something else. Um, oh, look. There's a little cricket right there on the floor. Yeah, you're so frozen. I, so I'm sure, I believe you. It, it, describe it to us. So a cricket. I've, I've pulled a, a dresser out to be my desk in front of me on this bed. And a cricket just crawled out from underneath it and uh, went along the floor into underneath the wall over there. And, uh, you know, crickets don't scare me. So uh, go live your little cricket life. Oh, um, that's very cute. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We heard that cricket yesterday or we heard a cricket down here yesterday and the kids were scared. They were like, find the cricket. And I was like, it's a cricket, guys. It's, it's like Jiminy. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say, I was gonna say did, did you hear it? Because it was singing a song. <laughs> it was. It was chirping away. It was chirping quite loudly. <laughs> well, now I'm not going to say I found the cricket. I guess I guess he didn't like what we were talking about because he left. Yeah. <laughs> Crickets are notoriously scaredy cats. There you go. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, anything else? I'm sure there is so much else to talk about with this movie, but anything else uh, at surface level? We talked about, uh, oh, Little Leaf Schreiber. Shandy, does he have a bigger part? Is Cotton Weary in the second movie? Yes. Okay, that's why I'm thinking of it. Cause I and he's in the third movie. I think we started the third movie, and I think he's in that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's so little and young. Yeah. What else? Oh, Shandy, Amanda, which one of you just said it's crazy about how the 
uh, they had the party because I have this note verbatim. It's always crazy to me how these 90 mo movies always have the parents going out of town to have a part and they have a party. Such an era thing. For sure. I mean, we had a lot of parties, honestly, uh, at my house when I was that age. But if if uh, people in town had been getting murdered, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> not. My mother would have stayed home. <laughs> but that's what makes it a horror movie, right? It's mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> if they're not doing the dumbest thing possible, it's the rules. It's, boxes. it's in the rules, baby. It's I don't in make the rules. the rules. And it's funny, too, because Dewey comes in. And is like looking around, you know, because he was told to keep an eye out. And he like jokes about taking away the beer and then is like, oh, no, it's fine. Just like don't drive anywhere, which is like, OK, but that's actually not how it works. Because that kid's like 17. <laughs> like, what? I don't know. Um, but you will notice that those fucking high schoolers did not heed the don't drive anywhere warning. They fucking mm. took off like our. They did all leave. Of, mad men to go see the Fonz because he was murdered. Yeah. <laughs> On the flag ball. Real fast. Yeah. <laughs> no, they were drunk driving uh, yeah. real reckless, recklessly down those country roads. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, did you catch the uh, the Freddy Nightmare on Elm Street cameo? Mm -hmm. The guy dressed as the janitor. You know, the janitor was dressed as well, whatever. It was in I there. don't think I've ever seen Nightmare on Elm Street anyway. No, so. I, I certainly haven't. Okay. Um, also, the phrase sexually anorexic was so 90s. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, wow. Yes. yes. And then finally, the last thing I had here was, I think, Jamie Kennedy's line, I never thought I'd be so happy to be a virgin, was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, pro I thought you were dead. I probably should be. I've never been so happy to be a virgin. <laughs> That's great. Oh. Yeah. Um, moving into scary movie, which piggybacks on this, guys, it is hella problematic. Oh my god. Does not hold up. No. There are some not that really... I was expecting it to, but no. oh lord. There are Real some bad. there are some really funny parts. Like the opening scene is hilarious. The yeah. scene by scene reshot and then And the fart. And the fart. I did oh, like I'm the fart. sorry. I didn't I mean, think the you fart jokes me. were the only jokes that really held up. I mean, a <laughs> yes. fart joke will be funny 20 years from now. Yeah. Very true. Always. It's just always funny. I love um, the Cindy Sydney. Cindy yeah. Sydney. Carmen Electra's character was named Drew. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Drew. Um, hello, Drew. <laughs> I love that she picks up the banana instead of like the knife or yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything that's laying out for her. <laughs> Oh my god, and the cameo from Dawson. Yes. I mean, whatever his name really is, but you know. James Vanderbeek. <laughs> yes, what? thank you. <laughs> Did I watch a different movie? Where was Dawson? He comes in the window. Like, you know how in the beginning um Billy comes in the window at Sydney's? Yeah. And it's like during that, them redoing that, that that then afterwards Dawson like, oh, comes shit. up and he's like, Oh, sorry, wrong set. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Because he got up to get a drink of water mm -hmm. and like I it was like I could hear it. I thought, yeah. I, and I straight up missed it. Yeah, yeah because like, you can't walk away when you're watching movies, said, guys. Katie Holmes's window, Joey's window, yeah. Joey's window. Yeah. <laughs> um, she came I, into his window. Not. Oh, that's right. right. I, you know, I never really watched Dawson's oh. Creek ever. Yeah, me neither. I, I would love to. Oh man, I loved it. Yeah, I don't know how oh, I missed out on this. The WB. Yeah. Mm, that was it. I mm. wasn't allowed to watch it, so I didn't. Felicity's Dawson's Creek. I was here for all of it. Ugh, I want to go back and watch those as an adult or watch them, not even rewatch them, watch them just so I could, could see what that. I was missing. Yeah. I mean, that could also be a, arranged. Yeah. All right. How many seasons talk. are we talking? That, well, let's, oh, that's what I say. Let's do some research and talk <laughs> and see. Oh, before uh, the Carmen Electra thing, honestly, I thought it was really funny when he's like, do you want to save your boyfriend? And it, goes to the boyfriend and she's like oh that guy that's not my boyfriend i mean i fucked him a couple times but that's it <laughs> i want to see what your insides look like oh we'll turn to page 37 <laughs> like all of that is solidly funny because she's making fun of herself mm -hmm. she's in fine. she's in on the joke as opposed yeah, to yeah. exactly about yes. her at her 
I forgot the wide mixture of movies that it was parodying. Like I had forgotten yeah. about the I Know What You Did Last Summer stuff. Yeah, I had forgotten almost everything. And uh, I looked it up and it was like very long list of yeah. things. Um, but yeah, the, I did enjoy the um, actress from American Pie. Oh, Shannon Elizabeth. Oh, Shannon I Elizabeth, love yeah. Shannon Elizabeth. That was She's fun. Great and everything. Um, yeah, but uh, basically everything else. Honestly, I fell asleep at, I'm not even sure what point. My last note is about Miss Man and how terrible that was. And yeah. then oh, I fell asleep. Terrible. So terrible. And then I fell asleep and I was like, you know what? I don't really feel like I need to go back and watch what I've missed. No. So I did. I watched the whole thing. I will say that the the Ray imitating Matthew Lillard stuff at the end was really funny. Like all of a sudden I was like, okay, this movie's funny again. Maybe yeah. I did need yeah. to go and <laughs> just watch yeah. the beginning and the end. Yeah, we watched the for whole little. scene. The whole <laughs> scene for when uh, you know, they reveal themselves as the killers and blah blah blah. Because it is actually they do they go back to kind of like the shot by shot sort of mm -hmm. reenactment mm -hmm. and he even does the i'll be right back and you know mm -hmm. i'm dying here man with the like the the, <laughs> the spit and the tongue and everything it is actually really would not surprise me if they pitched the first scene of that movie and then the last yeah. scene mm -hmm. yeah and that was and that like oh shit we have to make the rest of the movie also yeah. yeah yeah it's like oh, um we have like an hour and a half to fill what <laughs> yeah the the um i forgot about sherry o'terry and i forgot how much sherry o'terry bothers me in general mm. <laughs> she's so annoying um but the dewey stuff the deputy doofy oh. was yeah. so bad and so i bad. get that, I get that so they're bad. setting it up for the usual suspects ending which was clever i did like i've forgotten about that and i was like wow oh this is actually a very clever ending which is super would have been clever, but they didn't need to go so over yeah. the top with like the pooping his pants thing. And like, I would have been fine with even like stop sticking your dick in the vacuum because that's things that siblings say to each other, right? Like, even that I could have like let go, but just some of the stuff with like, I got poopy. Right. <laughs> some like, of it, it should just never be funny to make fun of fun people of that have, um, neurological that are not neuro neurotypical Neur yes yeah yes yeah, and the r word was used gratuitously yeah. twice and that yeah, was yeah. also not okay yeah it's yeah. such a such a product of its time yeah well and i think for me i think by far the worst part was the um the movie theater scene where like i a, wrote that down too where a group <laughs> of white people are stabbing the one black woman in the movie yes and, like I mean, not for nothing. Like, I had forgotten this was a Wayans movie. Yeah. Like, come on, so guys. Was it, was it, so, was it like, supposed to be pointing out the No, fact so that, she's... I mean, I, this is part of when I was sleeping. So, <laughs> right. Regina Hall, this is what I meant by... Because I remember the shake of spear and love part, but I didn't remember the stabbing part. Because I always thought that was so funny. that She's having a conversation, and she's being a stereotypical, very loud person. Mm hmm uh, she's got her like fried chicken she brought from home. She's talking on the phone to her friends. She spoils the movie for everybody. Like all of that is like, eh, but okay, it's funny because she's playing into it. Like she's whatever. But then like the killer comes in and they're so annoyed with her, the theater, that they start stabbing her. So like everybody takes a turn with the knife and it's all white people. And I just, my note was, the optics of Regina Hall getting killed by a bunch of white people in the theater is bad, even though I get what the joke was supposed to be. Yeah. Mm. It just yeah. really made me not feel good. Um, yeah. And like the sad thing is, I think that like, yeah, in that, in the context of when that movie came out, like I, I'm sure I probably would have laughed at it at the time because I just probably wasn't as emotionally aware. Right. And like again, I get it if I get it if the Wayans and Regina Hall thought that it was a funny it was a funny part and it spoke to like something culturally, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but it was just the horror, her getting stabbed and being the only black person in the theater. That was or the pearly person of color in the theater. That mm -hmm. was the part that was bad about it. It was maybe we could have a more diverse crowd. Right. Like well, yeah, I mean the Dalai Lama was evolved. there too. What? The Dalai Lama was also there too. Oh, that's right. The Dalai Lama was randomly there. 
But well, he doesn't. Yeah. And that's why I'm wondering, like, was that a comment on, like, Scream, which is, again, like, all white? I just thought that it was a commentary know. on you want to well kill could've. people that are loud at movie theaters. Yeah. And I I, think, again, this is the... <laughs> I think By that then was, I was clearly sleeping. <laughs> yeah. I think that that was what the joke was, mm. was that... You don't. You want to kill someone that's loud and boisterous and obnoxious in a movie theater. And I think that it would have been a better scene again if it was a more diverse crowd taking turns stabbing her. Right, because it, it felt just, very much more like all the stereotypes and the negative stereotypes around black women specifically. Yeah, yeah. I did want to say also, um, going back to the Miss Man stuff again. We don't have to like spend too much time on it because oh yeah, no, so, that was, was horrible. So awful. Yeah, that was pretty terrible. I um, just wrote holy transphobia. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, and what really stood out to me was like, I think that we have obviously made some progress because I don't think we would get a representation quite like that, hopefully today. Yeah. But there was a line in it about gaining a competitive advantage in a sport. Yeah. That's what Miss mm -hmm. Man said. And I was like, holy fucking shit. Mm -hmm. That is literally like the argument that the alt right is going with right now to ban trans athletes so it's like we've progressed a little bit but jesus fucking christ not that much yeah. right that part was bad all of the stuff with ray about like hinting that he was gay and then at mm. the end then at the so that you know that's funny stupid potty humor whatever mm -hmm. i thought that it, at the end it was kind of funny that uh fake Billy what was his name fake Billy was like we're gay and we're running off together and Ray is like I'm not gay because <laughs> that was kind of like teaching a lesson like never assume right uh, mm. yeah well it's like the, introducing the concept of like gender as a construct before that was even really a thing we were discussing yeah <laughs> but uh yeah overall I would I would watch the first scene and the last scene, and that's a, that's about <laughs> yeah. it. It was like a movie that I'm sort of like, uh, yeah. I, I, but I'm glad I'm I glad it was it. short. I'm glad it yeah. was. Short. <laughs> I'm glad I rewatched it because now I won't hold it with the fondness that I had before that having mm -hmm. seen it 20 years ago, 23 yeah. years ago when it came out. I don't think I've seen it since theaters, but yeah. Now I know the was up part with Ghostface getting stoned. That was kind of funny too. But <laughs> right. I mean, there really were like those, those sort of touchstone message, like just time capsule moments in that movie. Like it did sort of touch on like everything that was like so utterly absurd about those type of movies at that time. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Uh, Principal Squiggles. That was Squinny, uh, Squiggy from Lenny and Squiggy from uh, Laverne and Shirley. Which is spoofing oh. that Fonzie was the, the principal in Scream. That the cut. Wow. Look at yeah. you. Yeah. I used to watch Laverne and Shirley on Nick at Night. So I yeah, knew Lenny and night. Squiggy. Yeah, Nick at Night. <laughs> so when they said Squiggles, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot he was in this movie. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, Amanda, did you catch who played the, who was the actress that got killed in the uh, garage door? Yeah, sure did. Okay. It, um, I can't think of her name, but she Marissa Jurette the... Win Winnegore. Yeah, she was the original um, Turnblad. What's her first name from Tracy? Nurse Tracy. Yeah. So I thought that was that was fun too. I was like, I know that girl. I know that girl. Yeah. First, I was... thought it was, I was like, is that Heather, Heather Matazzaro? And I was like, that is not Heather Mar Matazzaro. And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh yeah, she looks exactly like herself. Yes. She's also the um she's also in what we do in the shadows. Yes. Oh, she's the wife of um their friend. Oh, the neighbors? The neighbors, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's been nice. in a couple I don't think she's been in the most recent season, but she had been in like the past couple of seasons, like she'd nice. pop in for an episode. Yes. Okay, I forgot about that. So for you non uh musical theater nerds, uh she she has done <laughs> other things. Yes. That scene was also terrible because that was another like just completely uncalled for joke about weight, but whatever. Right. Yes. Um, okay. Moving into Sleepy Hollow. 1999. 1999. It felt like 1999. It felt like maybe even older. I mean, really, Scream felt more new than uh, Sleepy Hollow. I, I, I yeah. love Scream. I just have to say, like, I, it's great. I'm yeah. 
It's pretty great. It was a pleasure rewatching that. We we're a scary movie. It was a pleasure hate rewatching that <laughs> <laughs> as I went on. <laughs> you can't go home. <laughs> exactly. But okay, Sleepy Hollow. That was way different than the other two, obviously. Uh, the Washington Irving story, as retold with uh, Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci and uh, Burton. What's his name? Tim By Burton. way of Tim Burton. Yeah. I gotta say, Very I Tim really Burton. Having enjoyed this movie. Produced really by Francis Ford Coppola, also. Did he, he executive produced it, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. I mean, also Michael Gambon, RIP. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There was a lot of people in this movie. There was um, a lot of people in this movie. The 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 uh, pedophile from um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was in it too. A lot of Harry Potter people too. Yeah. Like um, Miranda Richardson and yes, um, Richard and Griffith. Gambon. Yeah, and Gambon. Yeah. And like oh, Jeffrey names. Jones. That's who I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um. Also, um, uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. You know, if there was, he was the perfect headless horseman. Oh my god, he was. It sometimes it would even the way he'd move. It's like, oh, it's Christopher Walken. Yeah, <laughs> he's perfect. Yes. Yeah, I really like this movie. I had again, this is one of the ones I only scream I've seen a whole bunch of times, just not in like you know a long time. Uh, this is another one that I'd only seen in theaters. I'm so glad we revisited it. Do you guys agree with me? So we were talking about the Johnny Depp of it all over text and. Um, it was weird to watch a Johnny Depp movie, but he's so young and he talks so differently that like it was before he had kind of like gotten his Johnny Deppness, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. Like it was like watching a different person act. Like you were able to remove yourself from it being Johnny Depp. Yeah, I, I do. I just, you know, problems aside, like I think Johnny Depp is never better than when he is in a Tim Burton movie. I, yeah, I think fair. I agree with that. Like, that's I fair. just like how Tim Burton directs him and, like, what he brings to, like, that style of film. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree. It's like he was just so young and utterly removed from himself that it was like, I'm watching Skeet Ulrich. <laughs> <laughs> I look similar at that era. Seriously. Yeah. Um, I would just like to say, because I had to Google it, uh, because I was struck by it, there is a 17-year age difference between Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci. Oh, yeah. She's so obviously still a child. Yeah. But, oh, my God, all the ladies' boobs. All the boobs. All the boobs. I have a question. Uh, I don't know if it's a Tim Burton movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe somebody out there can answer this, or I could just Google it afterwards. In like, so this is supposed to take place in New York of 1799, like starting out in NYC, but then they go a little upstate. upstate. Two days um, journey upstate. Two days journey upstate. Um, Did they fucking walk there? Sleep right? hollow was like, <laughs> like an hour hour that drive. Far. <laughs> it's not that far. <laughs> Do you so, first have to build the carriage yourself? <laughs> That was my whole thing. I was like, God damn, did he crawl there? Like, I didn't understand. <laughs> but they get places faster in Game of Thrones and they go across continents. <laughs> <laughs> but only in the last season. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's my question. In 1799, did like in like the state of New York or like New England in general, did we did we build stuff like with like the half timbered buildings like they did in Europe? Because that is news to me. If so, I could understand that that Wait, would, would ask this? I was not prepared for an architecture question. Wait, please do elaborate. Keep going. You know, like the half timbered uh, buildings that you I think don't. of like medieval Europe, you think of like, you know, it's like with the wooden beams. And like where the second floor is like out further than the bottom floor because you only pay, you know, for the land on the bottom. And so the, and then you go out. Let me, I'll send you a picture. So that's the kind of architecture they had. And I was like, did that really exist in like the early, in the colonies? Actually, so that would I make sense. Not. It was probably more sort of your sort of standard New England colonial 
home. I don't know. Up over there, though, because it was in New York, and New York was a Dutch colony, so it would make sense if they were going to follow those similar, like, it's, you know, yes, relatively but, newly established. But I mean, you figure the, so it's years. the end of this, you know, 1700, so you figure the Dutch have been there for over 100 years at that point. True, but... I don't know. It would but make I've sense that they would still be remnants of that architect of that style around. I I, I would know. imagine that it's probably Tim Burton loves the whimsy and probably went with that. I would agree with because that. it is more whimsical. I would I would I would probably put money on that. Yes. I just <laughs> I sent you a link and if you like oh. scroll down you'll see what I'm it's yeah. Okay. Because right. there yeah. were houses like that in the in the thing. And I was like. Huh. Ah, so there were. I would also agree that. Yeah, I would agree with Amanda said that he was. I was like, he said to his set designer, like, find me something that looks magical and upstate. Right. You know, <laughs> like they all have British <laughs> accents. And again, like at that point, his, you know, how okay. far removed were we from the British accent? Like. I feel like all like period yeah. dramas, everybody just has a high T accent. So, okay. Yes. Two things really quickly. Um, I just Googled if there were half timbered construction, uh, if there was in the U S like She's in new reason. England. Mm. And it's uh, Google says uh, that half timbered construction traveled with British colonists to North America in the early 17th century, but was soon abandoned in new England and the mid Atlantic colonies for clapboard facings an East Anglia tradition. So I think that Tim Burton's set is historically incorrect, but that's fine. We're talking so, about a thing, a movie where there's a headless horseman. That's okay. So he, ba yeah, he basically it was said it was a two days journey away from New York city. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's rude from reality Cre here. Create an artistic license. Artistic. Yeah. The, he, he, basically, um... <laughs> he basically said to them, he was like upstate New York, but make it 1699. Right. It's supposed to be seventeen ninety nine. I know. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the other thing, speaking of accents, I um, went on this YouTube uh, rabbit hole the other day uh, about accents, and there's this video I watch with this guy. Like, that's my you know, favorite like, rabbit hole to go down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, for real. Please continue. He's like this incredible, like he has all this. He says like, oh, I'm not a linguist. And it's like, oh, no, yes, you are. <laughs> um, the shit that he explains. Anyway, um, and he like does all the accents. And he has this video of like English accents from like 1400 to like. Cool. Like British cool. English accents, I should say. Uh, which, you know, as he says, there are many different ones, obviously, in England. But anyway, um, from like the 1400s until modern day. And when you get up to like the 16 1700s it fucking sounds american it's like you can hear when it was like oh yeah that's when we broke off and that at that point like oh my God. features of british english accents which obviously like and that's why and then we were you know geographically isolated for a while so like we just kind of stayed which is what happened with the french accent in quebec totally well but anyway ah, it's fascinating in that video this i like i really do find this stuff <laughs> okay. very very interesting there's like I a guy it. that used to do like wired videos that like similar and like i just i just enjoy it yeah okay yeah. i will cool right now i feel like left out like i want to check this out <laughs> i will i'll send it in our group chat so okay. both of you can awesome enjoy listen. yeah I bet you Alex and Zachary would both love to hear this video too. Like, watch this. A, because it's a screen and they really don't, you know, <laughs> they're not that picky. <laughs> and B, because they're both kind of into that stuff. Uh, but getting back to the, the, the film of it all, I love the poster that says, Heads Will Roll. Oh, that's <laughs> a very 90s. That's so snappy. 90s. Snappy copy. Everything needs a catchphrase. Yep. Tagline. So, did you guys see the this this movie was I think the goriest out of all the ones we watched. Yeah. Um, did you see the ending coming? I didn't uh, until maybe like ten minutes before it happened. Interesting. Okay, because I had also I knew there was a catch, but I had forgotten who it was. Yeah, I, I mean, I figured it was too easy when he was leaving. But honestly, like, even when when the Johnny Depp character figured out that it was, like, a person that it, that was controlling the head, even that I was like, wait a second, how did he figure that out? Or was I just not paying attention? I don't know. Then I just went with it. But 
I think yeah, he no. figured it out because the horseman kind of kept skipping over him and was very focused on the person that he needed to kill. Mm -hmm. I think he he figured out like, oh, he's being programmed. Right. He's not coming for me. Like he's yeah. Because it happened like twice before yeah. he made the connection that like he interacted with the horseman twice before he was like, okay, he's being controlled because I've been in his space twice and he hasn't gone after me. Yeah. Fair enough. And then what else? Obviously, Christina Ricci is awesome because she's yes. awesome in everything. Um, I did have a question though. Um, how is it that in such a religious environment she was allowed to practice witchcraft? Just like pretty openly. Because she, she was white and rich. <laughs> Oh, you know, going back real quick to Scary Movie, that was a really funny joke when in the very first scene where she types in the computer and she wrote white woman in trouble and all yes. of a sudden. <laughs> you know, being self-aware. That was really funny. <laughs> and then everybody shows up and you can hear the radio. We got a white woman in trouble on blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Some things are just universally funny. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Um, getting back to Sleepy Hollow. Did you guys? We you, you were obviously all familiar with the story, or is this something that Amanda yeah. and I would have been more familiar with because we grew up in the area? Oh, definitely, you guys. I didn't even know Sleepy Hollow was a real place. That, that was news to me. That that it's not a two days journey. Because I grew up on the Washington Irving stories. My dad actually uh, took out the book of um, Rip Van Winkle and read it to Zachary last night. Oh. Yeah, and so I grew up hearing, reading these stories. I knew the Sleepy Hollow legend. I knew, obviously, all the uh, Washington Irving stories uh, in general. We went to the Sleepy Hollow area, did the hikes. There's a, there's a like a when I was a kid, when we were kids, there was a uh, like a in the tourist center. You got like a checklist and go to all the places that like Rip Van Winkle was, like where he allegedly fell asleep and where the fairies were and this and that. So. Uh, and, you know, you go to the waterfall. So I was very, I just, from my childhood, was familiar with these stories. Obviously, it was artistic license to make the horsemen controlled by Miranda Richardson. But I was just wondering if you guys were as as familiar with the, the general tales, tall tales, as I was. I've, I've never read the original story. But, like, I, I remember we had, like, a children's version of it growing yeah. up and like i remember like the um the disney version yep. of oh, it the like cartoon disney, the Dis like yeah like it, mickey was ichabod crane i remember yep. watching that and they threw I the remember, pumpkins at him yep i remember wishbone did yep. an episode uh with it um so like i i have always been aware of it but like in watching the movie i realized like just how removed from the story the legend i was like i couldn't actually remember all the beats of of the legend so like it did allow me to just kind of watch yeah, and the, watch the movie and just like as and watch like let the story unfold because i couldn't remember like what the source material was yeah and they did they took a, tour, a tall tale and they expanded it and gave it like an actual background but i'm i i'm glad that we watched it i really forgot how much i liked this movie i was able i know johnny depp has his issues i feel like I was able to separate myself from that without being like, oh my God, I'm a Johnny Depp fan again. Like, I think I can appreciate a piece of art for what it is. Also, I already paid for the service, Max. It, these were all on Max, these three. Right, so right. not like, it's Nobody, not like I gave them any money. <laughs> right. Nobody got my dollars. Yeah. Well, except the uh, HBO Max executives, but. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, there's well I gave, I gave Christina Ricci money. Love me some reach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it is. I mean, it's the age old uh, question of can you separate the art from the artist? And um, it's really easy for me to take a hard line on that when it's just like somebody that I, so, or somebody's movies who I don't like anyway, like fucking right. what's his name that the French love, you know? Um, Woody Allen. Allen. Woody Allen, yeah. Oh, Woody Allen. <laughs> what about both? both. I, just, well, right. I just know that we've talked about this in relation to your, your yeah. feelings on Woody Allen before. So. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't like his movies anyway, so it's really easy for me to have, like, a very uh, yeah. like, hard line opinion on it, but it's true that it's a little bit... And I would say, like, it's also a little bit different than, like, for example, I can understand if, like, if there's, like, an artist, like Picasso, for example, mm. uh, going back to, you know, right. Nanette, um, it's maybe easier, although, like, 
Picasso is hard too, because a little bit, because I mean, because nothing's made in a vacuum and just like everything that that influenced and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but I think it's, it's easier to talk about an artist like Picasso and like maybe enjoy somebody else's artwork um, versus a movie where it's like, there's a lot of different people that went into this thing. Yeah. You know, 100%, a lot of different influences, like, it's not like Johnny Depp isn't the only actor that is mm-hmm. in the movie. So, but yeah, I mean, totally fair. If somebody doesn't want to watch it for that reason, but. Right. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's a personal choice. It's a personal yeah. choice. Exactly. Johnny Depp clearly has a lot of issues going on with including substance abuse and in desperate Domestic need violence. of. And what domestic, domestic violence? Domestic yes, violence. just to name yes. a few. Just to name a few. So I like. I don't want to think that we're endorsing Johnny Depp. We're not endorsing Johnny Depp. We just we're, we're also watching, watching a, movie. a movie that yeah. that was made more than twenty three years, years ago. ago. Yeah, twenty four <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah. But to, okay. But to Shandy's point, like it wasn't like written, directed, starred by one man show Johnny Depp. Like right. Right. <laughs> right. And it's not like, uh, yeah, well, I was going to make a J.K. Rowling joke, but I'm just not. So <laughs> we're just we're just not. Who? Her? Yeah. <laughs> she who shall not be named. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Any last thoughts on uh, Sleepy Hollow before we take a quick break and move into the feedback? Oh, I will say um, I wasn't a fan of the very end when the Headless Horseman kidnapped the um, evil stepmother. Oh yes, and not that. really, not a fan of like the undertones of what that implies. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that was also so nineties. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, but other than that, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. the blood I, was insane. Oh, but it was like just the right <laughs> amount of camp. Like it was so. Yeah. it was so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah, it's it, it checked all the boxes of like why I enjoy like a Tim Burton movie. I could yes. listen to a Danny Elfman score all day long, like. I enjoyed it like a lot more than I, I thought I was going to. Yeah. And going back to the camp thing, if you're going to make a scary movie, that's not a horror movie. It has to be campy. Yeah. I would a agree with that. A movie. If you want to make a suspense movie, yeah. that's not a horror film and you're not going full artsy on it, then you got to have a good level of camp. Yeah. I mean, for yeah, me to that. watch in any way. Yes. Like, yes, you know, yes, yes. People are open to their own opinions, but I, no, I, me too. I mean, I agree. Look at look at Scream. Scream is a fucking campy, scary movie. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a that's why I've always liked it. On the yes. horror genre, like it, exactly. I think it's like it's so. It's where the only reason I was like, able to watch it in the first place. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's like where it sits in like the history of like pop culture and ho- the horror genre. Like I, I think you know. Yeah. yeah. Scream. You know, give Scream it their flowers. You know. Yeah. Okay. Next Halloween, if not sooner. Casper? Yes. Yeah. And what was the other one? <laughs> well, Casper was supposed to, but Casper was going to go with Ghost. Which I just, ghost! I love. I love. I mean, I God. think we should just do that. January. <laughs> We're doing it for January, everybody. Yeah. Casper and Ghost. And uh! then for Halloween next year, we can watch Teeth. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's take a quick break and we come back. We'll do the feedback and call in a night. All right, we are back. We're getting into the feedback. We have a very Halloween movie specific feedback coming up for you. And uh, the first is from Matt, and he says, "Are we sure we want to include a Johnny Depp movie with this year's Halloween movies? We already have Scream with his wine scene baggage." Well, Matt, we were sure, and we did. Yeah. Um, also, over our the garden wall, our choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we did a good job addressing both, though. Um, Over the Garden Wall, definitely. Yes, we're going to do that. Uh, we should do Nightmare Before Christmas rewatch for its upcoming 30th anniversary. <laughs> I'm, Sorry. I mean, 30th? I wait, wait, wait. That was, 30th? that was me fainting on the floor and trying to pull <laughs> myself back up. <laughs> but we really should do, yeah. Um, well, why don't we just use it for our Christmas movies? We could. We could. Seriously, <laughs> fucking cut it off. A little bit of a... A little bit of both. Kiss the season, always. Unless yeah. there's uh, a Christmas prince this year that we have to continue. Oh, with. shit, guys. If there's a Christmas <laughs> prince, we drop everything. 
<laughs> or a Chris or a princess swap. Yeah. Oh my god. If Vanessa Hudgens is back to her Christmas <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, I will say I would never wish for it again, but I do have fond memories of our very first COVID year because since we were all at home all the time and we just, I feel like Watch. we really had 25 days of Christmas. We oh, kidding. God, we watched so many Christmas movies. That that was the best. It, it was. I still love the one with uh, Mark Paul Gosseler. The, the... Oh, yes. Oh, that one was so good. Oh, what was that? I can't remember, but Mark Paul Gosseler, I'm here for it. And I remember that there was one that he was in. Wasn't the one? Wasn't that the one that was like Groundhog's Day, but Christmas? Was that the one? <sighs> the twelve dates of Christmas, something like that. I don't no. know. I have to watch it again. I don't remember the Emma Emma Roberts one. That was Holiday. Holiday, you're right. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Too bad oh. she's also apparently a crappy human being. Yeah. Oh, no. oh. Things. Oh. Yeah. 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 She sucks real bad. It does. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Matt also says, I just finished Totally Killer on Prime. It was a fun time. Basically a slasher movie, by the way, of Back to the Future. Kiernan Shipka goes back in time to try to stop a slasher from killing her mom and her friends in the 80s. There's blood, but nothing gruesome. Scream is gorier. Plus a uh, female filmmaker of color. Hmm. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I will it's, have to guys, check it's it out. A, truly, it's a really fun movie. It's yeah. it's a really fun movie. I love the way um, you pulled it. Like, I, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, Matt did it way more succinct and better than I did, but here we are. Um, hey, the cricket's back. The cricket must like what we're talking about. When you wish upon a star. <laughs> I think he heard Danny Elfman score somewhere. And he was like, what? what? <laughs> He's like, what? what? <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp, chirp. I've been trying to um, get with that guy for years. <laughs> uh, Amy says, I just watched Totally Killer today and loved it. It's, it's really a fun movie. And then John said, not uh, scary movie related, but also scary real life related. I didn't get enough votes for speaker. Well, so far, <laughs> no one has. Uh, yep. <laughs> getting real scary, though. Mm. Real, real scary. Mm. Yep. That is um, a horror our- movie playing out in real time. Yes, it is. Well, we got um, some Halloween feedback from Matt, so I will read that before our voicemails. Uh, Matt writes in, hey, Broads. So we got a trio of problematic Halloween movies. I only rewatched one for this. I tried rewatching scary movies for the first time in over 20 years, and man, that aged like milk in a hot car. Yes, so we uh, three broads agreed. Did not age well. (laughs) No. I bailed once we got to Doofy and the actor going full Tropic Thunder. Just a barrage of the first joke they thought of. The laziness is apparent in every frame of this thing. It feels not only like do the weigh-ins seem to actively hate the genre they're spoofing, but also films, the audience, and humanity in general. Mm. It doesn't help that its legacy is the half-assed, contemptuous reference as joke movies that lead to the decline of big screen comedy. Breakouts Anna Ferris and Regina Hall deserve so much better than this. I'd rather watch now and then three times in a row instead of five more minutes. I would watch now and then a hundred times. A hundred times times more. (laughs) Also, I kind of disagree. I don't think they actively hate the genre. I think it was just a very much product of their time. And I don't know if you remember, like the Wayans did some, I'm sure you do, Matt, did some pretty fucking ridiculous movies at that time. Does anyone remember Mm -hmm. White Chicks? I mean- I mean, to name one, to name one glaring example. (laughs) Uh, So I don't think they hate it. I just think that they are over the top. They have a specific voice in comedy, a specific point of view. And it's it's an 11 at all times. (laughs) Just always. (laughs) Hey, I am still here for In Living Color. I will love that show and I am here for it. Matt continues, I didn't watch Sleepy Hollow. I remember liking it when it came out, but Johnny Depp is so radioactive to me. It doesn't help that Jeffrey Jones is also in it. Obviously, good art can be made by bad people, and that's a whole other topic. It's a whole other topic that we did discuss. I feel like we're we're vibing here. Yeah. The one I finished was Scream, which still holds up for the most part. It is interesting to watch as a snapshot of meta narratives early on when Gen X created entertainment started gaining traction. It remains a pretty entertaining film with a solid script that launched Kevin Williamson and a six film and counting franchise. 
Unfortunately, you can't ignore the baggage of this film, as this film, as well as Scary Movie, have Harvey Weinstein's name attached to them, especially Scream with what we know about Rose McGowan. Again, trying to maneuver around entertainment that means a lot to us with dirtbags involved in the creation of it is a much larger issue. Well, aren't there dirtbags everywhere, though? Yeah, basically. Well, and I mean, like, to your point, like, I did rent Scream because I, like, have recently uh, canceled a lot of my subscription services because it got to the point where I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. And so I rented it. Um, and so some of that money, like, wouldn't that residually go to Rose McGowan? Yeah. And, and I, right. I didn't yeah. mean to say that so flippantly, like, aren't there dirt bags everywhere? There's also, it's just like when you hear about things like, you know, Lost and... There's a lot of people that make those movies, and it's also a detriment to the decent people that are involved if you're going to boycott something. And in this case, like 80% of movies that were made in the late 90s just because of certain people that were involved. Yeah. yeah. And you can, again, you can acknowledge that there are some issues, and there are, they're bad and, and definitely issues that need to be acknowledged, but I don't think it's fair to. You know, like Christina Ricci didn't know she was making a right. movie with somebody that was going to have horrific domestic abuse problems with his wife 15 years later. Like, she didn't know that. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. it's nuanced, right? You know? It's yeah. Like, I mean, I think, yeah, I think you the know, thing do is these like, things with a caveat. Same with right, Harry right. Potter. Sort of, like, Zachary's well, loving the books. And, yeah. and that's really like, already like, the books. Do. So there's what my caveat. It, what does it serve? Who does it serve boycotting? Like, is it, you know... And to the point of Harry Potter, like, I think there is kind of a difference between, like, going back and watching for the first time, in my case, or re-watching a movie like Sleepy Hall because we want to talk about it in this larger context. Um, and, you know, at the same time discussing the problem of um, Johnny Depp versus, for example, like, if you're making a casting uh, decision today, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, like they were for... For Rowling's like newest stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. Then like maybe you don't cast him, right. but right. they did anyway. <laughs> right. right there, you go exactly. Perfect. There is the new one. <laughs> and just like uh, the cricket that's staring at me still, just let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> <laughs> you are really killing it on the bringing stuff back around. <laughs> Everything is tied. We're tying up loose ends. I'm on fire with Long you Islandness. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right matt continues yes it's land the plane <laughs> where i hope colleen liked totally killer I apparently i've forgotten to mention netflix's fear street trilogy which was a fun slightly gory throwback based on the rl stein books yes i loved those books i love me too I love all those books. same same uh and when you were putting out suggestions how did i forget to recommend Megan, the sleep the sleeper hit from January with the killer doll. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Maybe. Megan. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't caught that one, Prime and Peacock, it's a fun time. And PG-13, there is an unrated version with a little more splatter and swears, but it is 95% the same. I heard Megan was a really fun movie. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, at least there's stuff for next year. Weird trivia. Between Screams 1 and 2 and Scary Movie... Three actors who would play the parents on Riverdale pop up. Hmm. Marisol Nichols, Veronica's mom. Lachlan Mon Monroe, Betty's dad, also in Totally Killer. And, of course, Skeet, our boy Skeet. Our boy uh, Skeet. Skeet Ulrich, Jughead's dad. <laughs> God, uh, guys, I really have the hot for Skeet Ulrich now. <laughs> he's really handsome. And as, according I, to you, he's still handsome. That's uh, why I suddenly like feel all the sweats for him. Like, <laughs> like, oh my god, this man is still attractive. And the hair was so like. 90. I love the hair. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Okay, and then Matt has one more note. Usually, this is where I bring out the milkshake ducks, but we all know the deep dark secrets of those movies, and they all suck. So here's something weird in case you missed it. LA TV station KDOC decided to have a New Year's Eve show hosted by Jamie Kennedy. I've only seen six minutes of highlights and oh my God, this thing is a glorious train wreck. Everything goes wrong, including the countdown to midnight. Shannon Elizabeth is also there and he includes the link to YouTube and signs off Matt. I uh, will put that YouTube. link in the show notes. 
I feel like I've seen clips of this. What year was this? Did this happen? Because this isn't. This was 2012. Okay. 2012. Wow. Uh, I will look through some of this later because I feel like this would be pretty funny. Plus, I really <laughs> like Shannon Elizabeth, and when I, I hope she's not problematic too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't meet Woo. your heroes. All right, well, let's finish. Uh, let's go finish this uh, show on a, a high note from uh, from uh, Greg. All right, so we've got three voicemails from Greg. Let's just see how they play. Here we go. Hello, uh, Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. I uh, just wanted to call in some feedback about the, the movies you guys are going to be talking about on today's episode. Uh, out of three, Scream is definitely the one that I know the most. Uh, in fact, it's my favorite horror movie, um, maybe ever. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I, it's a slasher, but I know some people say it's not scary, but I I think it is, especially with Scream, because as they say nowadays, it's always somebody you know. But So I'll get back to Scream in a second. Uh, the other two movies, Scary Movie, uh, I saw back in the day, and I actually watched it in the past year. And honestly, I don't really remember much about it beyond the was that. Uh, I'm sure there's more I remember, but, like, I don't know, it just felt kind of dated. Like, a lot of those, like, parody, spoof, like, comedies, movies, a lot of them just kind of come and go. I mean, it was it was really funny back in the day, and I did enjoy watching it again, but it's just, yeah, it just kind of comes and goes. It's not anything I'm going to go back to uh, probably for another 20 years or whatever. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, uh, I saw as a kid, don't remember anything about it, so I've got nothing to say. Uh, but back to Scream. I could talk about Scream all day, um, but I'll try to keep this to one voicemail. We'll see how I do. Um, the Scream, like since it's one of my fa- all-time favorites, it's not my favorite horror movie. Uh, I think the big things that stood out to me when I first saw it, uh, I didn't see it in the theaters because at the time I was only 10. Um, so within a few years, though, I did see it. It was before I turned 17. It's been a handful of years. Uh, but I did see Scream 3 in theaters, so I saw the first one by then. I think that was 2000. Anyway, uh, I think the fact that it wasn't just one killer, it was, oh, oh, oh geez, sorry, I guess, spoilers, um, yeah, spoilers, sorry, I should have spoiled myself. Uh, the fact that there was two killers, not one, uh, I guess I won't name them just to try to be nice to anybody trying to avoid spoilers. Um, sorry, though. <laughs> but uh, that was a really cool twist, and just the moment that the, the killer, the first one, comes out, and we all we all go a little crazy sometimes. Or oh man, did I just mess up the line? Anyway, uh, no more doubting myself. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, maybe it was odd, darn it. Anyway, that was just a cool reveal. I'm like, it's so surprising because he's been a quote unquote attacked. So you thought he definitely wasn't. Uh, then everything just turned, and that that from that moment on. I mean, the whole movie is just incredible. But from that moment on, like the the ending is just so good. And re- revelation after revelation about motives and and stuff like that it was just so good. Uh, not even to mention, uh, obviously, like anybody watching it now may not quite get this, but the whole intro to the movie being Drew Barrymore, she was all over the posters for that movie back in the day. Everybody thought she was going to be the star. All right, so keeping it to one voicemail was a total failure. So, but let me, I said, I really wasn't paying attention when I got cut off, so, oh well. Uh, so, I, I think I maybe got into the part where I was talking about Randy. Uh, I loved Randy as a character, as another fellow movie guy, uh, and just the structure with the rules and stuff. And even though it changes from film to film, uh, I, I always enjoy that, hearing how, what the new rules are for each film. Uh, for this one in particular, obviously it was the classic, the classic rules. Uh, don't see, you know, I'll be right back, uh, you know, all that. And if you have sex, but obviously Sydney lucked out that she, even though she had sex, she was able to kill kill the uh, the killer. I don't know why I'm still, like, trying to not spoiler it. It's 27 years old. But uh, I guess that's all I'll say on that. Uh, I've already rambled enough. Like I said, I could talk about Scream all day. Uh, I, I've loved learning about behind-the-scenes stuff, and uh, it's, very, it's very interesting. Um to me that whole aspect of it. and you know when it gets you know movies like that blow up it's, it's always fascinating to learn about but all right uh, i'll let you go i think i've rambled for like six minutes now so bye bye, bye. <laughs>
Greg has one more. We'll get to that in a second. But before we do, we all have very similar thoughts about Scream. Yes, indeed. I did. I did forget to mention the line that is also in Scary Movie: "The we all go a little crazy sometimes." It was a great mm-hmm. delivery by yeah, my, yeah. my 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 new your, boyfriend, your my, new boyfriend. <laughs> my new boyfriend Ski <laughs> 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 Skeet, skeet, skeet. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's also a problematic thing to say right now. <laughs> Nowadays, right? <laughs> uh, did you guys see the uh, the Pete Davidson I'm just Ken spoof on SNL this week? I no. saw it on, on their Instagram, yes. It's so good. It's it so good. fucking hilarious. Yeah. I love the part where he says people online still call me Skeet because of someone who I can't name legally. And then Kanye's picture pops <laughs> up online. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. Um, uh, I thought that was very funny. Yeah, we all go a little crazy sometimes, Greg. You're right. Mm-hmm. And then finally, uh, Greg's last thoughts. Here we go. All right. Sorry. It's the last one, I promise. Uh, but I forgot you threw in Totally Killer. And uh, I saw that the day it came out. I was looking forward to it. Because one of the writers on it, Sasha Pearl Raver, I followed her online for like 10 years. I know thought she was funny, and uh, so I was really interested to see. I don't know exactly which part of the script she worked on or anything, but just wanted to see her project. And um, I actually pretty li- liked it a lot. Um, it it did play to a couple of things that I'm like always a sucker for, you know, time travel. Uh, normally, I, I would say dead daddy stuff, but now it's dead mom stuff. And now both apply. So that also worked for me, though. <laughs> Um, and I just always enjoy the time travel, and I like the way they did it in this one. Um, kind of had, I think it had a nice, unique spin on it. Get it? Spin on the time travel? Cause, I get yeah, it. I, I saw it. I get it. Everything. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I thought that was cool. I really liked the the characters. I thought they were really well. I thought it was all really well written. Uh, it was intriguing, and when things started to change, uh, it really shaped up like who I thought who could or couldn't be the killer. So that was interesting. Um, but yeah, overall, I just really liked it. So I, I'm not sure what you, you, you ladies will say about it. But uh, if you're out there, if you haven't seen it, it's on Prime. Totally killer. Check it out. Peace. Peace. Loved it. The end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. guys. Fine. I get it. I want to watch it. Yeah. Maybe we'll sounds talk good. about it. Sounds good. Maybe if more people watch it before the live Zoom, we can talk about it on the Zoom next week. That could be doable. Uh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Plus, we all love Karen and Shipka, so Sabrina. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why is she looking at me funny? She knows who she is. And then I was like, oh, it's 1038. That's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've never known her name, so I l- heard it the first time when you said it earlier in this episode. Yeah. We also had one last bit of feedback that we got from David God on Facebook, and he says, I have never seen any of those movies. As a matter of fact, I've never seen any of the Scream movies. I to which I say, that. I'm sorry, what? Yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, you. I mean, if you made it this far... You have to at least watch Scream. It's so much fun. It's not even like a scary, scary movie. It's just a a movie that's a commentary on scary movies. And people die. But you you go in expecting people to die. The end. On like a one to the fucking ring. This is not the ring. Oh, God. No, no, no. Not for me. Not for me. Yeah. Nobody's crawling through the TV. No, thank you. I mean, there's a death by TV. But there was, and I was thinking about that too. Like, I don't know if that would work today because TVs are not like that anymore. No, but there's, there's still something else like a giant, like speaker system or something like yeah, death by Sonos. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, on that note, thank you guys so much for the feedback on scary movies, Halloween movies. Love, love, love all of this. I plan on keeping going. In fact, I'm going to watch whatever was referenced earlier that I forgot already. And I really want to watch that Fall of the House of Usher show that is like the new It thing, too. I hope we all see you on uh, next Tuesday, which is the 24th, right? Whatever day it is. On Tuesday, 9 o'clock, in costume preferably. If not, that's fine. We just really want to hang out with everybody. So hope we'll see you then. 
If you have any feedback, even if you can't make it next week, the broadcasters through your gmail.com. Give us a call, 331-276-2373. And if you want, it may be easier to record a um, a message on your iPhone, and then you can just send that attachment, which is what Desiree does um, when she sends voicemail. So that also is an option, too, if you don't want to do the call. You can just, you know, do, you know, well, oops, sorry. There is no you, time limit. Yeah. A voice memo won't cut you off. Yeah. So that's that's a good. That's, I mean, I feel like that's a, a life hack for yeah. mm-hmm. for feedback if you want to. I mean, whatever. Otherwise, call the number. That's cool. It keeps us from losing it. So that's cool. Do that too. <laughs> However, you feel comfortable sending us feedback. Send exactly. us feedback through your preferred uh, channel of communication. Exactly. Thank you to the patrons, especially the ones that contribute a certain level. And that'd be Eckhart, Rigner, Maggie, the Magnificent, Joanne with the Plan, and Ed, the Creepy Poopy Head Mailman. Thank you guys so much. Check out the other shows on the network, Rumblecast After Dark. Jay was just on the most recent one, which was, I think, 225, because Nick wasn't there. So he uh, filled in for Nick. Well, we have uh, Survivor with Jamie, Jack, and Colleen is back. And The Amazing Race with Jack and Cindy is back. And if you're catching up on Ahsoka, they just finished, uh, Owen and Rue's Barbecue just finished uh, talking about Ahsoka. So all of the things. And if you become a patron, even at a dollar, it still helps everybody out. So thank you. We get like 20 cents if you do that. But that is like so appreciated. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> it really is. It really is. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it is appreciated. I'm not kidding about that. But anyway, on that note, we'll be right back. Woo! <laughs> 